Great Teacher Onizuka is one of the greatest mangas of all time. It's one of my favorite mangas of all time. I remember when I first picked it up, I didn't have any particular reason for doing so. It was a manga that I put on my plan to read list simply because of the fact that it had a high rating on my anime list. Of course, I'd heard a good amount of praise surrounding it as well so I was at least somewhat interested. But regardless of that fact, I put it off for a really long time. Then one day, I remember seeing a panel from GTO being shared on IG and I thought it looked pretty cool so on a whim, I decided to start reading. One chapter turned into 5, 5 turned into 10, and 10 turned into 100. Before I knew it, I was thoroughly immersed in its world, story, characters, and amongst all of that, at its core lied Onizuka, the greatest teacher of all time. With that being said, let's give a rundown of the premise. The opening chapter introduces us to our main character Onizuka. We see him scouting for potential victims to add to his fat bank. You see, he's realized that once women pass the age of 30, they reach their expiration date. And so he's looking onto the scene, searching for them beautiful, voluptuous high school girls. The perfect age when they're ripe. Truly a respectable man with great character. Now, you guys might be thinking, wait a minute, why does this guy sound and fit the exact criteria for a pedo? We're gonna ignore that fact and give this man the benefit of the doubt. Nah, but in all seriousness, what actually happened was he got rejected from a job interview, and so now he's just chilling, smoking a cig. It just so happens to be in a place crowded with girls, and he just so coincidentally is in a position to look up skirts. Anyways, this dude is a delinquent. He's got the whole starter pack and everything. The gangster hair, the motorcycle, his bike homies, etc, etc. And most importantly, he's one horny ass dude. Just from these opening panels and my description, we already get a decent grasp of who this guy is as a character. And almost all of these traits are unideal to say the least. Everything about him screams unlikable. Yet these traits are unique to Onizuka. And as much as people may hate him for it, Onizuka is a man who won't put on a facade for the sake of acceptance. In the opening page when Onizuka is taking his interview, he tells his interviewers that his strongest trait is his honesty. And this line holds true to Onizuka more than anyone else in the room. Even though he's expected to act and dress a certain way, he doesn't conform. Rather, he simply stays true to himself. Now, is that a stupid thing to do, especially for a job interview? Yeah, obviously. But the whole point of the scene of these opening panels wasn't for Onizuka to sell himself to his potential employers, but it was for Onizuka to sell himself to us, to tell us and to show us right off the bat that Onizuka is incredibly flawed, but he's someone who wears these flaws on his sleeves for everyone to see. And whether you're willing to give him a chance despite those flaws is up for you to decide. There's a scene later on in this first chapter where we see a conversation between Onizuka and Ryuji, his best friend. They recall to a moment where the two made a promise to one another, to become real men, and Onizuka later proclaims, I will definitely become a great man. What it means to be real or to be great is never defined and quite vague, but it's made clear to us that it's something important, valuable, and very vital to Onizuka. Now, one day as Onizuka is chilling at his usual spot, a girl approaches him. But because this dude has never had any contact with a female, much like myself, he doesn't know what to do. And he pulls out his simp card in order to gain her affection. And I don't know how he did it, but by some grace, he scores a date. Granted, he does lie about a few minor things, like being a public official, but that's besides the point. Okay, I know I said he was honest like a couple seconds ago, and that still holds true, but I never said he doesn't lie. I might sound like I'm contradicting myself, but I promise there's a difference between an honest person and a liar. Anyways, Onizuka realizes his mistakes, and sets out to tell her the truth, because that's what a real man would do. Unfortunately, he sees her crying, and his simp owner starts acting up again. So he lies. Again. Okay, again, I promise this dude redeems himself eventually, but hey, these lies end up getting him and the girl in the same room. And while the two are together, she starts telling him about her guy problems, and he pulls out the you deserve better line. You guys already know this, the usual stuff. But we soon realize her guy is actually waiting outside in the rain. And so the logical course of action is obviously to jump out of the window like a goddamn bird and start French kissing the dude. But yeah, with that, her final words were sensei, and that was the last time Onizuka heard of her. Realizing this girl just left him for a middle-aged teacher, and he essentially got cucked, Onizuka finally finds his resolve. Does he throw away his sim tendencies? Nah, of course not. He instead sets out to become a teacher. Not just any teacher, but a great one. 
all in the hopes of one day getting laid. I really hope this premise sold you guys on the greatness of this manga and more so on Onizuka and how stupid but crazy he is, or, or rather how stupid and crazy the scenarios are. But in any case, I know everything I've said thus far sounds bizarre, but it makes for a really fun and engaging opening chapter. To see a not so perfect character get into the strangest of situations, only to then pursue a career just because the dude wants to get laid. And as much as Onizuka lies in this chapter and a lot more later on, he never strays away from who he really is. He's a hopeless case when it comes to romance and especially when it comes to his lustful desires. He's honest in the sense that his character and the core that makes him him is something that he never lets go of. And that earnest honesty, that desire to carry himself as he sees fit and to simply just be himself is something that he carries onto the classroom. Soon after Onizuka gets his job as a teacher, he's often put into unfavorable situations, sometimes because of his own idiocracy, and other times because of his own students. And that's because initially, no one wants Onizuka's company, no one wants his presence. To them, he's simply a nuisance, just another teacher playing pretend as many other adults do. Even in our own lives, people play pretend, people will put on a front and will act the part depending on the scenario they're in. If you're an employee, you comply with your manager's orders no matter what, because that's what you gotta do to keep your job. If you're a student, you suck up to the teacher and you'll get good grades. If you're a teacher, you suck up to the higher ups and that will lead you to your promotion. No matter how tedious, unfair, or stupid certain things may be, you put up with it. Because that's just life. You have to put on a mask to a certain degree in order to get by. But by doing so, you lose a part of your real self. And that's where Onizuka comes in, a person with nothing to hide, with his face on full display. He's true to himself no matter the circumstances, not abiding by what people want from him or what people expect from him. He's driven purely by his own desires and only acts to fulfill what he wants to do, and that might sound selfish, and that's because it is. But even so, he does what he thinks is right and always sticks to his principles. Like any human, there are times where he may stray from his path. But in every instance, he never loses his real self, a perverted, selfish, yet kind-hearted and genuinely good-willed person. It doesn't seem like it from that opening chapter, but we soon come to learn that he truly wants the best for the people around him. He lies, yet he's one of the most honest people that ever existed. He constantly falls, but he always picks himself back up. He constantly fails, but he always perseveres. Life throws hurdles at him over and over, but in each instance, Onizuka doesn't falter. There's never been a moment where he remains stagnant or complacent. He's always looking ahead, not letting his missteps and regrets of the past drag him down. As you already know, Onizuka is by no means a perfect human being. He doesn't exactly have the proper qualifications to teach. But as flawed as he may be, he tries. He genuinely puts his heart and soul into reaching his students and helping them in whatever way possible. Sure, people may not respect him and push him under the rug, but he tackles whatever challenges lie before him regardless of that fact. At first, he's shunned, but Onizuka continues to push forward, all for the sake of those in need of help. With a stubborn will and a little bit of force, slowly he creates cracks in that invisible barrier that exists between him and his students. Whenever he sees someone in pain, whenever he notices that someone needs help, or any sort of guidance, he's there. Whether he's wanted or not, and whether they want help or not, Onizuka is always willing and around to help them stand. And while he may be perverted, unintelligent, careless, and lacking in actual teaching skills, he makes up for it by teaching his students something that's far more valuable. He teaches them how to live, how to endure, struggle, agonize, and eventually how to overcome. These lessons, these life lessons that although simple, hold very true and hit extremely hard, and that's all because they come from a place of genuine care and realism. Onizuka doesn't need to say something deep or profound, he doesn't need to pretend like he is something more than he actually is, he just needs to be himself, he just needs to be genuine, and that's exactly what he does. He delivers these lessons with heart and every time he does, he changes people's lives for the better. He heals them, he reinvigorates them and most importantly, he inspires them. And in doing so, he inspired me. His lessons, his morals, principles, and way of life are all things that reach far beyond mere words on a page. They are things that I'll carry on with me for the rest of my life. And that may sound cheesy, that may sound overly cheesy, but GTO really does deliver in all regards. It sells its themes and, and, and ideas in a way that resonates with me and so many others out there. With a mixture of outlandish scenarios, intense action scenes, and periods of emotional depth, there's a genuine and real charm to it. 
And that charm all comes and originates from the most unexpected of places, from Onizuka, a man who is by no means a person you'd expect to be a role model, let alone a teacher, yet this man is tasked with being the role model for countless students. He's incredibly flawed, yet he's one of the realest people you'll ever encounter, whether it be in fiction or in reality. Onizuka is not someone you would expect to love, yet it ends up happening anyways. He's far from perfect, but he's someone who acts in accordance with his own values and principles, and he teaches you how to act in such a manner. He teaches you how to overcome, he teaches you how to live. Onizuka is a hero. A friend, a slob, a pervert, an inspiration. And lastly, Onizuka is a great teacher. That is going to be the end of this video. Thank you all for watching and I hope you guys did enjoy. And if you guys did enjoy, then, you know, maybe potentially leave a like and possibly subscribe if you guys want to see more content like it. I was a lot more passionate about this video because I really like GTO and this video might have had a lack of focus because I kind of just, I, I don't know what I did. I, I did a little summary and then I did a little like love letter to him. But besides, besides that, regardless of that fact, you know, I hope it, hopefully it was still enjoyable. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna talk to y'all later and uh, see you next video. Peace.